In July of 2013, God opened a marvelous door for Team Zambia member David Ray and myself, John Schrader, to take a trip to Burundi, a small country located directly north of Zambia, with Zambian pastor Douglas Sakawaha and blessing a young man from Burundi, Pastor Douglas has been training with the desire to plant churches in Burundi from Zambia. The nation of Burundi experienced great violence through a horrific civil war from 1993 to 2005 in which an estimated 300,000 souls died. The pain that resulted can only be truly understood by those who lived through it, but it also resulted in many people that are now open to the Word of God. As we departed from America, we had no idea what God had in store for us in the country of Burundi. We had planned on holding a crusade and even had a beautiful personalized leather-bound Bible we hoped to present to the president, but God had other plans for us. One of the first things we noticed upon arriving in the country was how many more mosques there are than in Zambia. As we located a place to hold the crusade, we were initially offered the facility for free, but then things quickly changed. We left Pastor Douglas negotiating with the administrator, and Brother Ray and I went out and found a rock under a tree in the field next to the facilities. As we prayed for wisdom, God clearly directed our hearts to not hold the crusade and laid the exact thought on Douglas's heart at the same time. We did not hold the crusade, but now what? Like this car that had broken down, it seemed that we were going nowhere. We were able to hand out tracts and were encouraged, but we knew that God had more for us, and then God opened a tremendous door. Brother Ray turned a negotiation for food at our gate into a preaching opportunity and began to preach the gospel. It was a death sentence. Because they violated God's law. After he preached for a while, he allowed me to continue the message. The men eagerly listened, but as we were finishing, something amazing happened. One of the young men approached me and said, I want to preach. Orphaned in the war, Arkad had a good salvation testimony, but was very lacking in understanding the Word of God. He accompanied us almost the rest of the time we were there, and we were able to spend much time with him. Arkad was truly a gift from God and has become a precious friend. The first Sunday in Burundi was filled with the marvelous hand of God as well. As the sun rose over Lake Tanganyika, we prepared for the day. After Pastor Douglas spoke, Brother Ray preached in a church we had been invited to. Then I was given the opportunity to deal with two of the souls that had responded to the invitation. Eddie and Anita were very convicted, and they realized they had religion, but not saving faith in Christ. What a joy it was to see these precious souls understand the Word of God and God's plan of salvation for them and call on the name of the Lord for salvation. After church, while discipling with Eddie, another man from the church asked me, Why do I feel so convicted? We found he was trusting in his baptism to save him, and I joyfully had the privilege to lead our nod to Christ. From there it was a whirlwind of events as God led, guided, and directed our paths. From pressing crowds that literally grabbed the tracks from our hands, more opportunities to preach on the streets, and continued times of discipleship, it was a heartful to see all the souls that needed Christ. We walked almost everywhere to save money, and it caused quite a stir to see the Mazungus carrying our water and even a live chicken home for dinner while footing. Some of you followed our posts on Facebook when we could find an internet cafe. We're so thankful for your support and especially your prayers. There is much false religion in Burundi and it was sad to meet so many who never heard a clear, careful presentation of the gospel like Eddie, Anita, Arnaud and many others. A man David Ray met on the street had this 
to say, I need people, I need people sent by God to come to teach us the truth, the, the truth in the Bible, the word of God. That's what we need. We need to be taught, we need to be trained so that the truth may gain our hearts and to come to destroy us what the so-called churches have been teaching us. Gerard has continued to correspond with Brother Ray and has expressed a desire to come to Zambia to be trained by him in the Word of God when Brother Ray arrives. We had the joy of meeting with the new converts one Sunday and their response to the hymns was precious. The first thing was sing. We first the first song. Yes, the first song. And for me, yes, is a chicken, chicken, and chips, and chips like chicken and chips. <laughs> Their hunger for the word was simply incredible. Brother Ray, Pastor Douglas, and myself taught the Word of God from around 9.30 in the morning until after 9 that night with only a break for lunch. Arkad, the young man that approached me wanting to preach, was a true joy to our hearts and accepted a challenge from me to begin copying out the book of Romans by hand as I had started in John. He had this testimony to share regarding his experience. But, and he said that he won't, he won't write the only that, but he writes other books. Yes. So writing out the scripture, this is what he's talking about. The writing out the, the book of Romans has helped you. Ah, it's such a good uh, very much. Very much. Amen. Amen. He diligently labored to finish before we left and was writing out the last few verses of chapter 16 the morning we left. God truly knit our hearts, and as we have stayed in touch, our God has communicated to me that he has already obtained his papers to come to Zambia to be discipled and trained by me when our family arrives. We were able to spend one last night with Eddie and our God, and this is part of the testimony they shared with us that night. <laughs> They won't know the word of God. Too much more than they won't know the word of God. It's a very, very long time I was waiting for someone to teach me the Bible. Then you came in Burundi. I doesn't know you. He doesn't know me. Then God, he do everything to meet you and me and my wife and my God, I don't know. I think to find you it's like to find a treasure for me, a gold or diamond for me. Because it's a 15 years, 15 I think, or more. I was asked God, imagine this time, 15 years. I asked God, please God, I want to know your word. I want to know your Bible. Only your God has sent you. God, because now I'm sure it's the true God who has created everything you see, even me and you. It's Him has sent you and your brother. I'm sure, I'm sure, because 15 years is too much. I wait, I wait, I wait, I wait. That, that show me God truly has listened to me, my prayer. But thanks, God. For me, it's like it's like to go to gold. Now I'm rich. I'm rich. So now I'm rich. Ooh. Rich in the Word of God. Yeah, I'm rich in the Word of God. I'm, I'm rich. Now. How many people like you are there in Burundi that are just waiting for somebody to tell them about the truth? Too much, my friend. Too much, too much Burundi that they don't know the word of God. I tell you the truth. We too much we, we, we are lost. We we lost in Burundi don't because we don't have any other people to tell us the truth. We were able to leave them with French and Swahili tracks and New Testaments in French. 
And there is still so much to be done there for the Lord. Truly, there is much fruit to be born in Zambia and Burundi. The precious souls of multitudes of lost men, many dear lost women, and countless lost boys and girls who have never had someone share a clear gospel presentation with them so they might know how to be truly saved. There are many tonight that are hungry for physical bread in these countries, but consider the fact that there are many who are hungering for the bread that came down from heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the truth. There are great fields that are wide unto harvest in Zambia, Burundi, and many other of these nations, but laborers must be trained and sent, like Eddie, Arnaud, Arkad, and Gerard, and others. Truly, as the slogan said on the three-wheeled Mobius in Burundi, there is no time to lose. And as Romans 10 asks, How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? One question remains to be asked as we hear one final heart's cry from Burundi shared by Eddie. Imagine before we came, if you, if a, uh, if a, uh, if a, uh, uh, before we came, if I was dead before we came, without you know the word of God, the truth, what am I, what am I, turn to my God, say we don't, because we don't have any other people to tell us the truth.